Hey guys, what's going on? MaxFTE here, and today I'm back with another Pokemon Go video. Today, as you'll have read by the title, we're going to be going over my personal top tips and tricks and everything you basically need to know about the Wild Area Global 2024 for Pokemon Go. This is basically just going to be running through the actual event, as well as things you can do to sort of prepare for the event, in-game and in real life. But yeah! So I think the way that I want to do it is First off, I'm going to speak about the actual event itself and all the features, the spawns, the raids, that sort of thing. Obviously, there is quite a lot going on, so knowing what to actually prioritise in terms of what's going to be good for raids, what's going to be good for PvP, that sort of thing. So thankfully, we've got this really nice uh, infographic from G47IX on Twitter. Make sure to give them a follow. Having a look at this, Global Wild Area. In terms of Pokemon debuts, we're going to be getting Toxel and Toxtricity. I honestly I don't actually know if these Pokemon are gonna be good at the moment, but it's a new Pokemon and it's a brand new shiny, so they're gonna be interesting. It's always gonna be new getting a new Pokemon and a new shiny, the chance of that. So I would say prioritize I maybe wouldn't say prioritize the 10k eggs because personally, me personally, I don't enjoy hatching eggs for how low of a chance it is to get something decent. I mean we've still gotta wait and see what the actual egg pool is gonna look like. Me personally, I'm not going to be spending any money on incubators for this event, but like I say, that's just my preference. And if, if you want to, I'm not like judging or, you know, feel free to, but me personally, I'm not going to be spending any money on incubators for this event. Obviously, the Toxtricity is going to be in raids. It's going to be in raids and it's going to be in Dynamax battles anyway, so it's not like we're not going to have a chance to get it. But maybe a couple eggs to sort of get the actual Toxel as the Pokedex, because I don't actually know if that's going to be shite in the wild or not. However, yes, we can see here, got Toxel in 10k eggs, as well as the Gigantamax Toxtricity. Sorry, I've been saying that the entire time wrong. In terms of the raids that we've got as well, we've got Primal Groudon as well as Primal Kyogre. They're going to be in raids for both the Saturday and the Sunday. Now, this one's a bit of a tricky one because they have been, they've been in raids so much. They have been in raids quite a lot and they are really strong Pokemon but I think whether you want to prioritize this one or not sort of depends on how many like do you do you personally do you have a good Groudon? Do you have a good Kyogre? If you do I would say there's better things to prioritize. Personally, Me personally I've got a level 51 of each and so I don't really need another Kyogre, another Groudon, and I've got the Shinies as well. So I'm not going to be going out of my way to do any of these raids. Me personally, I'm going to be prioritizing the other sort of raids that are going to be there, the other features. But that's open to interpretation depending on, you know, whether you want one. If you want a good one, feel free, just bash it out. But this is just my personal sort of take on it. As well as we are going to have in five star raids, we're going to have Origin Form Dialga and Origin Form Palkia. Now, these are, they are going to have a chance to be shiny. And they are also going to have a chance to get their special moves. It's a bit of, it's going to be a bit RNG based. For me, I would say Dialga and Palkia are both really good in Master League PvP. I think, I believe actually Palkia is quite good as a Dragon type raid attacker as well. Dialga not so much. It's not going to be bad Dialga, but Palkia is just better as a Dragon type attacker. So, again. With the chance of getting the special moves, I would say the Dialga and Palkia are very worth going for. Two very strong Pokemon, always good to have candies for. Plus as well, getting the candies and the rare candies as well from the raids. Getting the actual Dialga and Palkia candies, being able to power your Roar of Time and your Spatial Rend. In case you don't know, Spatial Rend is going to double the distance that you can see Pokemon. And Roar of Time is going to pause certain items like your Incense, your Lucky Egg and your Star Piece as well as your daily incense, so if you're looking for a shiny Galarian bird, just like I did, three, two, one, <gasps> shut up. Make sure to extend your daily incense. Max battles. We're gonna be getting Dynamax Drill Burr and Dynamax, it's got a picture of Dynamax Excadrill. I don't know if that actually means that Excadrill itself is gonna be in battles or whether obviously we can just evolve the Drill Burr and get the Excadrill. For now though, I would say that Personally, it's a new, it's a new dynamo, it's a new, it's a new max Pokemon. So I would say that it is going to be worth doing regardless. However, with the Toxtricity, that is going to be Poison and Electric type. Excadrill, 
being steel and ground type, that is going to resist both the ground and the electric type. So Excadrill is going to be really strong up against those toxicity battles. So definitely make sure to get one or two, get them powered up a wee bit. And yeah, but I would definitely say that for the max battles, both are going to be worth it. I don't know how the actual forms is going to work for the toxicity. I've not played any of the main series games, so I don't know how that works. But we're yet to see, we've got the, I believe we've actually got the global, sorry, not the global, the Japan event in person this weekend, so I'm sure we'll see on Twitter in probably not no time at all. Now on the Saturday, on three star raids, keep in mind this is only on the Saturday, there's going to be Luxray, there's going to be Snorlax with the cool jacket on, and there's going to be Scolipede, I think that thing's called. Now, Luxray's got a little charge TM icon beside it, that's just going to mean it's going to have a featured attack. I can't actually remember what the move is that Luxray gets, oops, but it doesn't say here. And on the Sunday, it's going to be Venusaur with the charge attack, so that's going to be getting Frenzy Plant, which is a pretty much a must for Venusaur. Snorlax, again, on the Sunday, as well as Electivire. Personally, for three-star raids, obviously all six of these Pokemon that are in the three-star raids between each day, they can be shiny. I think on the Saturday, I would pretty much only be going for the Snorlax, and on the Sunday, Venusaur is going to be a really good one, as that's going to be quite a nice electric, sorry, not electric, it's going to be quite a nice grass-type attacker, especially with the Frenzy Plant, also going to be really good for PvP. Electivire, also going to be a really strong electric-type attacker. Not as good for PvP, but it's a fun spice pick. As well as the Snorlax on the Sunday, that's always going to be a really fun one to get. Hopefully, praying that I can get that shiny. <clears throat> Let me know if you're going to be going for those shinies as well. As well as in the four star raids, so I think they're going to be only in person, but we're still yet to see. We will have the two forms of toxicity, so that's going to be interesting. Obviously, they can both be shiny. In terms of wild spawns, we're going to have Alolan Geodude, Electabuzz, I can't actually remember what the little green dog is called. It's the pre-evolution of Manetric. I just... Electric, that's it. I think it's Electric. Electric, Unovan Stunfisk, Shinx, Hisuian Voltorb, regular Voltorb, Magnemite, the pre-evolution of Galvantula. I can't remember what that little bug is called, the little yellow one there. Tynamo, Blitzel, and the pre-evolution of Helioptile. I, th I can't remember if Helioptile is the big one or the little one. Yeah, Helioptile, that's the little one. And then for the poison type, we're going to have Skorupi, Krogunk, Hisuian Quillfish, Spinarak, regular Quillfish, Paldean Wooper, Bellsprout, Venipede, Bulbasaur, Tentacool, Scrap, and Marini. They're all going to be pretty interesting spawns. In terms of meta relevance for raids, honestly, none of them are really going to be that good. Magnemite when it evolves to Magna Zone is quite good, so I would probably say that's actually the only one there that is going to be relevant for raids. In terms of PvP relevance, Skorupi, when it becomes Drapion, is incredible for PvP at the moment. Things like the Krogunk, the two Quillfishes, they're going to have relevance. Spinarak, when it evolves to Ariados, is quite good as well. Paldean Wooper, when it evolves to Clodsire, is amazing right now at the moment. And... Honestly, Tent Tentacruel is going to be okay for PvP, and Marini, when it becomes Toxpex, is going to be quite nice. Other than that, that's about everything for the wild spawns. <clears throat> In terms of the mighty Pokemon, these are more likely to have high IVs and more likely to be XL or XXL, as well as more difficult to capture. On the Saturday, we're going to have Pidgeot, Golem, Gyarados, Luxray, Scolipede, Galvantula, Tyrantrum, and Marini. Honestly... I mean, it's pretty cool that they can all be shiny, but Gyarados is going to be quite a strong one, and honestly, I think that's probably about it in terms of Pokemon that are going to be strong for raids or PvP. On the Sunday, we're going to have Venusaur, Electros, I think that thing's called, Electivire, Dragonite, Dragalge, Mamoswine, Feraligatr, and Poliwrath. Oh, again, all of these can be shiny, and some of them are going to have really good moves. All of these, well, Venusaur are going to be really good, Electivire are going to be really good, Dragonite, Mamoswine, Feraligatr, and Poliwrath. So six out of those eight Pokemon on the Sunday are going to be really strong. Make sure to prioritize them, they are going to be amazing. As well as, for the event, lure modules are going to last two hours, event field-themed research, 
one event snapshot encounter per day. There's no limit on the remote raids, so get your wallets out if you're wanting to do some raids. The daily limit for collecting max particles is going to be increased to 1,600, as well as featured attacks when you catch and evolve certain Pokemon. You can also get a chance for a special background during Toxtricity max battles, 4 star raids and higher. New avatar items and hairstyles, you'll get a book, more encounters with electric or poison type Pokemon during party play, as well as more Pokemon on the route and additional buddy candy. <clears throat> So that's everything that I've mentioned just there. That is free. That's you don't need to pay for. As well as ticket holder exclusive. You'll be able to choose your path and you'll either get poison type or electro type. One of the two, whichever one you choose. And you'll either get the pop Pikachu or the rock Pikachu. <coughs> these, we did last see these in 2021 for Global Go Fest. So nice to see these again. You're going to get up to 5 free raid passes from gyms each day, an additional 5,000 XP from raids, special research on collection challenges or go snapshots, increased max particle from PS. I'm presuming PS means from power spots, from power spots and explorations. There's going to be collection challenges as well, one additional candy XL from 4 star and higher raids, Double hatch and double catch candy, up to six special trades per day and a reduced trade cost. We're going to get a special pose, we're going to get half, dis half hatch distance, three event snapshots encounters per day, double hatch stardust and double XP, and an increased chance for Toxel from 10k eggs. So going back to my point earlier about the Toxel, um, thankfully because I'm in the UK I will see you know the sort of how the event unfolds before it actually gets here so I'll just wait and see wh what the sort of spawn rate is going to be like for the Toxel and before I decide as well as one timed research task each hour that awards Go Safari Balls so I believe for the Go Safari Balls I think they can only be used on the mighty Pokemon correct me if I'm wrong and obviously this event is from November 23rd until November 24th I hope you would know that by now so that is going to be about it from the event itself in game at the moment what you can do to prepare Free up your bag space, get rid of legendaries that you don't need. For example, I've got loads of Giratina, load of Zamazenta, load of Zacian. I keep keeping these for trade, but honestly, it's just, it's probably not, it's just, I just never get around to it. But clear up your storage space, clear up your Pokemon space. One thing I like to quite do is I've got a transfer tag in which it tags stuff within the last 48 hours, gets rid of hundos so it doesn't show hundos on the actual search tag and it gets rid of shinies, gets rid of um, XXL Pokemon as well and I can just click hold on one, select all and just transfer all of that just like that now I don't even need to think about it look at my shiny small that I got as well today during spotlight hour and what else you can do is obviously get rid of all the junk that you don't need from your bag stock up on balls as well, this is a really important one depending on the, your sort of play situation whether you've got a lot of poke stops or not it's always good to stock up on balls even if you have too many balls, you can just get rid of them if you don't need them during the event. But, like I say, make sure to stock up on items as well. Star pieces, lucky eggs if you're looking to reach level 50. Incense, always going to be really good to have. Another one that's going to be quite good to do is make sure you've got enough Palkia and enough Dialga candy. Obviously, using Spatial Rend, doubling your Pokemon spawn radius. Or using Grower of Time, which is going to be pausing your incense, your lucky eggs, your star piece. These are going to be really good options during the event, so if you've got the candy, use it, why not? As well as another thing that I feel is worth speaking about is stuff you can do and prepare like in real life before the event. It's always quite good to sort of plan out what you're actually doing for the event, you know, where you're going, are you meeting with friends, you know, is there a group going about, that sort of thing. Having a group, having a look on campfire, seeing if there's a group near you, that's going to make doing the raids so much easier, having just that amount of people. If you're rural, this is, you know, it's whether you want to sort of make the drive, if that's possible for yourself, um, out to somewhere that's a bit more populated. But yeah, planning your event, making sure where you know where you want to go. The sort of obvious things as well, well I say obvious, but I'm, always, I'm really bad for forgetting to do it. Charging your power banks, actually staying hydrated, having snacks with you, that sort of like basic level stuff that I actually am really bad at forgetting. You know, obviously if you're playing, it's quite a long day. If you're playing for that length of time, staying hydrated is gonna be really important. 
and I think for people in the northern hemisphere this one is going to be quite important because this event is in November this is like the latest like in the year that we've ever had an event like this so wrapping up warm is going to be a really really important thing as well as investing in some things like I don't know touchscreen gloves I've always meant to do that but I've just never done it and so every cold every event that I do and it's like around this time of year I think oh, you know I just really need to do it and I never do it so yeah make sure to prepare in advance as well as if you're playing with friends make sure to speak to them about the event you know is there anything that's spawning during event that they might want to trade re-roll that sort of thing and honestly I think that's about it uh, for my tips and tricks for this event you know as somebody that's been to many many a go fest over the years that's my sort of best advice I can give to sum it up basically plan ahead and it's funny coming from me because like I say I'm really bad at this I just don't plan ahead and I just leave everything last minute however planning, it, planning ahead is gonna be your best friend you know make sure you go into the event knowing what you want to do what you're wanting to catch your sort of goals as well as you know having your water your snacks and staying hydrated as well as your power banks the most important thing if you're going to be playing for that length of time as well as keeping warm if you're in the northern hemisphere but yeah i honestly i think that's going to be about it for this video if you've enjoyed if you've got any other you know suggestions leave them down in the comments below Make sure to subscribe as well while you're at it, it does help out the channel a lot. And we're closing in on 8,000 subscribers which is just, it's just crazy. But yeah, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like. If you didn't enjoy, leave a dislike, let me know why in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next video. See ya. Peace.